Hallelujah. You know, Jesus came to bring us life and life more abundantly. And the Bible says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. In this life abundance, it, abundance comes with obedience. You can't expect God to release something. In other words, he does not reward disobedience. He rewards obedience. The Bible talks about that he gives grace to the humble, not grace to the proud. He gives grace to the humble. So there's something that he requires. It's called divine order. And in this divine order, he's got specific things that he requires for each and every individual one of his children. The Bible says, submit to God and resist the devil. And in submitting to God, it means that you're submitting in a divine order that you are covered according to what God has established you to and not according to what you feel or what you think. That's why many people go astray because they're easily deceived because in how they feel. And in this, there's a divine order and a divine protection. There's a divine covering. And when we get into these areas, God begins to release certain things. And these promises that he releases, the Bible says, once you do the will of God, the promise is released. And, you know, we have been talking about uh, how the enemy infiltrates in the area and brings deception. And, and people have to come out of the soulish arena because there's so much soulish ministry in the body of Christ right now. It's very soulish. And in this soulish ministry, many individuals are just led by how they feel, what they think, and what they see, and not really truly being led by the Spirit. So they become men-pleasers instead of God-pleasers. And one of the things we talked about is that memories have a voice. Your memory, everything is associated with memory. This whole realm is associated with memory. You and I exist in the arena of memory. So your memories is what's trying to direct you and in there god is saying that's why the bible says cast down your thoughts right your imaginations because those are associated with memories now a stronghold is a memory lie it's something that's been placed upon you that you agreed with and it's been a stronghold in your life you could have been said something when you were a child and you agreed with it you'll never amount to anything you'll always be sick this that and whatever and those things begin to manifest because as a man thinks so he is so the word says, cast these thoughts down, get rid of them, because these memories have a voice. And in this voice, you can be easy, you can think it's God speaking to you if you cannot discern it. But if you're in soulish ministry, it's impossible for you to discern it because you will be not, you will not submit to God. You'll be submitting to what you feel like and what you hear, and you cannot resist the devil. So the devil begins to manipulate, deceive, and lead astray god's children because they really don't discern his voice they think they do but they really don't so there's something that has to happen when we talked about this there's there's an area where we've got to create new memories and get rid of old new memories are established by truth it is called the voice of truth so we want to be able to create new memories and in creating these new memories, we're now being led by truth. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 9. Let's read this together. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. In other words, we know in part. Nobody knows the whole thing. Hello. We only know in part. We speak in part. <laughs> we are not able to see the full picture. We're not able to see the full picture of the plan of God. God does not allow us because then we wouldn't trust. And we'd end up changing his plan anyways. Only when perfection has come will we fully see and understand all that is necessary. And perfection, and that perfect what he says, is talking about him. When everything is done away with in the perfect presence, the perfect arena, everything associated with him that has come, then 
we will get the full picture. See, your body, your mind, and everything about you cannot handle the full picture. We would blow up. So he only allows us to see in part. <laughs> when I had my visitation from the Lord, I thought I was going to explode. I expected guts everywhere. I was expecting arms here, legs there, everything. I was going to explode. I was going to overdose and explode with glory, love. And I said to him, basically, go for it. Because <laughs> if this is death, if this is what it's like to be with you, I'll take it. You can just blow me right up. And he said, not time. So like a child speaks, thinks, and understands, but when birth of a new man and maturity begin to grow, we begin to speak differently. We begin to think differently. We begin to understand differently because we are creating new memories. Are you listening? We are creating what? New memories with truth and replacing the childish ones that lie. When the perfect is established, we shall know and be known by perfection. Are you listening? Because when he is come, when he has come, when he comes in that perfection, so will we be. Let's go to first John chapter three, creating new memories. First John chapter three. We have a powerful package that's been released. It's called spiritual identity. And uh, if you haven't been here for the teachings, I encourage you to grab this. First John chapter three, in verse one. Is everybody there? First John chapter 3, starting at verse 1. Let's read this together. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been what? Revealed what we shall be. Why? Because we see in what? Part. We know in part. We think in part. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And when you see him as he is, because you can't see him the way he is now, you die. But when you see him the way he is now, you will be able to see the things in fullness because you're not going to be the same. Are you listening? It says, and everyone who has this hope, everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. The voice, when, <laughs> listen, <laughs> hallelujah. When the perfect is set in place, he shall be revealed and we will see him as he is and we will be like him. In this, there is something that must be established because it says, in this hope, in this hope, in this hope, in this hope, in this hope. How do you have a hope? Something must be established. A created memory. Are you listening? A created, a new created memory must be established to have a hope. A created memory. Now there's a created memory of purification. This hope is a thought of future faith. That we <laughs> will be like him. It is a hope. It purifies us. Because this new hope now is a new created memory. Is everybody all right? And, and, and in this thought that comes to me and you, because it's a new created memory, we know that this hope is future faith. And faith is not blind. It is spiritually seen. See, people say, well, I walk in faith. Well, blind faith is incorrect there's no such thing as blind faith faith is what you see people tell me all the time well i'm stepping out in faith well did god tell you because if god told you you would see it if he didn't tell you you're not going to see it but if the devil told you and you see it you're walking out in blind faith because <laughs> you were blinded by the devil and you got another vision and it ain't god because god never interrupts himself there's the voice of truth and then there's the voice of error there's the voice of deception and, and in this, we've got to begin to realize that God is creating new memories in me and you. 
so that the old memories are going so that we can no longer be deceived. And these new memories are being created by experiences. And I'll share that with you in a second. Is everybody all right? Let's go to John 8, and verse 31. John chapter 8 and verse 31. When I was a child, when I was immature, when I couldn't see correctly, when I couldn't hear correctly, when I couldn't speak correctly, immature, I was a child. And we're, a child, we're children in Christ, and then we begin to grow and increase. And we begin to grow and increase. The further you mature, the more you begin to grow and increase is because you're creating new memories. David always said, I remember whenever he was in trouble. See, so God allows you to experience certain things to create a new memory of truth so that you can begin to remove the other ones. Is everybody okay? And John 8, 31, is everybody there? Would you read it with me? Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Now is his word true? Yes. And you shall know the what? Truth and the truth shall what? shall make you free or set you free. But how many people know the truth and they're not free? You know why? We'll keep going. <laughs> then they answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. Well, I'd say that's deception already. <laughs> how can you say you will make, you will be made free? And Jesus answered them, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Is disobedient sin. See, there's an area where God is requiring us to go deeper. Well, I just don't feel like doing that. I don't feel like submitting. I don't feel like being a divine. I'm just going to do what I feel like doing. Well, then you're in sin and you're a slave to it. Well, no, God, God, God must have, he directs my steps. He does. No, you're in sin and you're a slave to it. In other words, but in this arena, you're a sin and a, sl a slave to it because of the emotional arenas. Because it's always directed by those memories that say and speak. They speak. They have a voice. And they promote an emotion. They promote a desire. So that desire, when, when you are ruled by your desires, you are out of order every time. Has everybody got it? When you are ruled by desires, you can't stay in divine order. It's impossible. Why? Because you cannot submit to God, so you cannot resist the devil. That's why we got so much granolaism in the body. In verse 35, and a slave does not what? Abide in the house for what? Forever. But a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Wow. So the voice of truth, again, you may know the truth, but until it is practiced, then it creates a new memory. These memories are burned in you when you experience it are you with me these are burned in you these memories will burn in you when you experience the freedom it's a created new memory how is it burned in you how is it how is it there you know because many people know the truth don't they but they're still not practicing the truth why are they not practicing the truth because it's not been a, it can't be a created memory until it's been experienced when there's an experience that's established and a freedom that comes, it's burned. Bam. Uh, it's burned. There's a freedom. This experience by truth is burned when there's the freedom. Ah. Now, that memory, that new created memory, allows you to walk in an area of truth and you are able to use that created memory to help you discern what is truth and what is false. But you got to understand something. The devil will come and try to nullify that new created memory. That's his job. Has everybody got it? He tries to get you to forget. He tries to bring you to you. So you're no longer relying on truth. You're relying on you. Is everybody all right? Creating new memories. So you're either going to be a slave to deception or a son of truth, a slave of deception or a son of truth. Now, you may be a son of truth in certain areas of your life, but still a slave of deception in others. That's why God is constantly bringing us in the areas where we can experience the freedom of 
the voice of truth so it burns a new memory. In other words, nobody's going to tell me no different. I know when I had my visitation from the Lord, even though I've had pastors of churches tell me I was delusional. I've had other people say, were you still high? No, I was clean for two months, and it wasn't a flashback. It was a flash, I can tell you that. <laughs> but it wasn't a flashback. It was a flash in the future. <laughs> but nobody can tell me that what I experienced, that burn, that created memory, has always kept me in the arena that he's real, he loves me, and this is true. And nobody's going to tell me no different. That tongues, casting out devils, healings, gifts of the Spirit is for today. Jesus didn't come to promote religion. He came to destroy it. See, when my dad showed up, I became his son. See, now everything associated with that was with me in the natural realm was gone. It was not truth anymore. That's all it was, was a vehicle to bring me to truth. But when I met the truth, and it's not just an area of, oh, truth. It's a person. It comes from the eternal. It's eternal truth. And that was burned in my spirit. It was burned in my memory. And it will never leave. Because in that moment, I was free. Free. See, when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, and there are certain things that begin to free you, those are created memories and they get burned because it's truth that you practiced in an experience that happened to you. That's how creating new memories is established. It's not just established by reading and hoping. It's established by truth and practicing it. So until when you get free by practicing that truth, that created memory is established. It's burned in you. So you're no longer fooling with religion. You're fooling with eternal reality are you listening it's eternal reality see now you're not trying to go run to comfort anymore you want to run to the truth you're not trying to run to get because you already got you're not trying to prove yourself to anyone you don't have to brag about what you do for jesus hello because you're already proven come on do you get this Hallelujah. <laughs> Creating new memories. Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. Glory. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. Is everybody okay? Let's read it together. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the, to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of a sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned it in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Now, there is a law of the Spirit. It is known as the law of truth. It's also known as the law of grace. It makes you free from the law of sin or the presence of evil or deception. Because you practice the truth by thought, by words, by action, the law of sin, which is now the law of deception, that creates memories of the flesh once you are practicing these things, a new created memory is established and you are no longer allowing the flesh to rule your life because you've experienced a change by practicing the truth and it's now nullified the law of sin. Is everybody okay? Because sin or the presence of evil is always creating memories of the flesh, isn't it? So when you and I were in the world, we were lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. And in that, that is a law. And you've got to understand that there are laws that have been established. And it says that you and I, by the law of the Spirit, it says we are free from the law of deception, the presence of evil, and sin, same, when you and I are walking according to the law of the Spirit. 
if we're not walking according to the law of the spirit. So there are laws of the spirit. Does everybody got it? And that is the spirit of truth known as the spirit of grace. And as you and I are walking according to these laws of the spirit and you are practicing these things, you will experience freedom by walking in the laws of the spirit. And that is going to burn a new created memory. Created memories cannot be established unless it's been experienced. It's impossible. You can hope for it, you can desire it, and you can pray for it, but until it is experienced, it cannot be burned. Burned in you. Hello? So, when you and I were in the world born of the flesh, we were out burning experience, memories. The enemy was creating memories in me and you of loss to the eye, loss to the flesh, and pride of life. So everything that was happening in your life and in my life was nothing but promote self. I'm going to do it my way. See, but there's still believers still doing it their way because there's still open doors in those areas. These, these memories still have not been burned. There's still too much soulish arena. And Malachi chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2. In other words, we read the Bible... And we read about experiences. And we read about how individuals have changed. You may go somewhere and hear testimonies how somebody's changed. Now, that testimony might encourage you, but it isn't going to change you. It, it's not going to, that's why it's a personal thing between you and God. So you're to seek until you experience. And goosebumps is not an experience. Are you listening? Because there must be an experience of freedom, not management. People think, oh, I'm free, but they're right back into it. That's not freedom. When you have to manage something, that's not freedom. Freedom is it's gone. It's gone. When you got to manage something, that's not free. It's called management. We call it demon management. And one thing you don't want to do is manage demons. You want to get rid of them. That's why they keep coming back because the new created memory hasn't been burned yet. Are you listening? But when it is, now that new created memory of truth is going to overcome the lie of the devil. Malachi chapter 2. Is everybody there? In verse 4. Malachi 2 verse 4. It says, what it says? Then you shall know that I have sent this commandment to you. Now, is a commandment a part of a law? Yes. That my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him one of life and peace. I gave them to him that he might fear me or reverence me and honor me, respect me. So he feared me and was reverent before my name. The law of what? Truth. The law of what? Truth was in his mouth and injustice was not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and turn many away from iniquity. For the lips of a priest, are you a priest? Should keep knowledge. And people should seek the law from his mouth, which is the law of truth. For he is a messenger of the Lord of hosts. Again, it is called the law of truth. I want to share with you three quick laws. Actually, there's more laws, but there's a law of the physical. Amen. What comes up must come down. God has established a law in the physical when he created angels to upkeep the universe. Certain stars burn out at a specific time. It's to maintain a balance in the universe. Things that are happening always in the universe. That's why God created angels. Now, angels, now we know that the universe is upheld by the presence of God. But what brings the presence of God? Praise. That's why there's praise still through the universe by the angels of the Lord. It's upholding the universe because of his presence. Has everybody got that? So it's not just hanging out there by nothing. It's all upheld by his presence. And his presence is upheld by praise. So praise must constantly go up to maintain the universe. And the angels move and operate. And they take care of all things in the universe. Everything according to God's time. Things rotate. It's all pre-calculated perfection. You and I and no scientist can figure it out. They still can't figure out how your heart beats without an energizer battery. That's all they look is that little bunny. Bing. 
the energizer. They might know how that works, but they still don't know how your heart really works. But in this, there are laws. So we have a physical law. We have the law of the spirit, which is also known as the law of truth or the law of grace. And then there's a law of covenant. There's a law of what? Covenant. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. Law of the physical, law of the spirit, and laws of covenant. Is everybody there? Hebrews 8 verse 7. Would you read it with me, please? For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they did not continue in my covenant or my covenant laws. Is everybody with me? See, Mosaic laws were actually covenant laws. They were ordinances and things. So they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my what? My laws in their what? In their mind, in their spirit. In other words, in their conscience, you might say. They are going to know what is right and what is wrong. They are going to know what pleases God and what displeases God. And I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother saying, Know the Lord for all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds, and I will remember no more. In that, he says, a new covenant he has, made, he has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. Then indeed, even the first covenant had ordinances of divine service and earthly sanctuary. <laughs> Laws. God always establishes laws in other words truth these are supposed to be truths by covenant uh, in other words in this covenant and in the new covenant we call now the ministry of the spirit the old covenant was known as the covenant of the law because it was a law covenant there was ordinances and so forth in fact when moses came down with the first set of tablets that was written on stone, it was the Ten Commandments. And what happened? He broke those. But that was prophetic of what was to come because he, prophetically, he would break the first covenant. He would end it. It would become obsolete. Then Moses went back to grab to, to um, do the other set of tablets. But this time, Moses wrote in it. God dictated. And in this, it was the covenant to where it would be done Another covenant would come, but the first covenant was through ordinances. It was the law of covenant. Now the second covenant would become the ministry of the Spirit because it would become the law of the Spirit. It would be known as the law of truth or the law of grace. And in this, it is very important because so many times there are things that are under the law which people don't even know that they're still under the law because a truth or created memory hasn't been burned yet to bring that freedom and release from a law of deception. Is everybody okay? <laughs> so the ministry of the Spirit, which is the new covenant, will guide us into creating new memories. The ministry of the Spirit, which is the new covenant, will guide us. It says he guides us to all truth. He will guide us into creating new memories of truth. That, of course, brings freedom. Again, the first covenant was what we call the Mosaic Law written in stone the second covenant is the law of the spirit written in the heart these would be continuous commands commands we look at laws but there's truly the bible says where the spirit of the lord is there's freedom and it's freedom from bondage <laughs> it's not freedom to do anything you want it's not freedom to disobey it's not freedom to do it you know is everybody okay and so many people take that liberty incorrectly 
It isn't freedom to do what you want. It's freedom from bondage as you obey. In Galatians chapter 3. So the spirit now in the new covenant of the laws that has written in us is guiding us to all truth so that we can practice truth and find freedom in practice in that truth so a new created memory can be burned in us now. Is everybody with me? Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1. Now, this is very powerful because, see, when, yes, the enemy comes and steals, but it's it's difficult unless you allow the stealing after it's been burned. Because it was a created memory. Once it's been burned, it's difficult for the enemy to steal unless you actually give it away. So you're exchanging it for something else. In verse 1, it says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? In other words, witchcraft has been involved. That you should not obey the what? Truth. See, when you do not obey the truth, you are not obeying the spirit of truth, nor are you obeying the spirit of grace or the law of grace or the law of truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by works of law or by hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh or by the law, the Mosaic law. It says, have you suffered so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain. Does everybody see that? Go to verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the what? The curse. So when you begin to justify yourself under the law, you are under a curse and don't even realize it. Well, I don't steal anymore. I don't lie anymore. I don't do this, but I still do what I want. Then you're under a curse. See, the only way the enemy tries to get to you, he's always trying to create or bring forth a curse in your life. That's how he accesses you. Everything's associated with curses. Disobedience will bring a curse. That's what rebellion is. That's what the enemy always is trying to get to us is get a curse on us so he can access us. And when that curse is applied, he tries to access us to begin to erase or get us to bribe us in exchange of those created new memories. He tries to exchange them. He tries to erase them. In verse 10, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, curse is everyone who does not continue in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God. Well, I'm a good person. I don't steal no more. I don't do this no more. But see, there's another law. It's called the law of the Spirit. It's no longer a mosaic law. It's called the law of obedience by the Spirit of God. So that you and I no longer, we're not, we're not living for ourselves anymore. We're living for him. We're not doing what we want to do or what we feel like doing or what others are doing. We're to be obedient for the specific plan that he has for us individually. The will of God is you and God, not you and anybody else. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, curses everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of what? Ooh, the what? The blessing of what? Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. In Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Now, this is awesome because, you know, many people have suffered things in vain. They've suffered things in vain by no by not obeying the law of truth to create new memories. What begins to happen? See, right now, the enemy is trying to infiltrate to create a curse of lack, a curse of lack. And in this curse of lack, as he begins to infiltrate the body of Christ, because the body of Christ is looking at the world. Even though they don't want it to happen, they're allowing the world to dictate them. Are you listening? So if the world is dictating us, then what's happening is by believing what the world is saying, we actually come under a curse of lack. Because is the world in lack? Yes. Now, the earth is the Lord's in the fullness of it. 
Satan is the God of the world system, but he is not the creator. So in the curse of lack that he sends forth, which we've actually been freed from, but, you know, if you don't know what you're freed from, you're not free. Come on, are you getting this? See, this is where the enemy, why why do you think his greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear? Because his whole purpose is to prevent individuals from getting new created memories. And there's going to be a new created memory tonight imparted. And I pray that each and every one of you experience what's it's burned. Are you listening? The curse of lack by not knowing the inherited blessing of Abraham. Now, I'm not talking to just financial lack. I'm talking about spiritual lack. I'm talking about the lack of being able to mature. I'm talking about the lack of coming off and, and overcoming your soul. I'm talking about the lack. All of these things that the body of Christ is lacking right now. Is because of a curse. One of the thing, areas is they've lost sight of the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham that has been brought forth. Let's read this again. Look at this. It says, Christ, verse 13, has redeemed us from the curse of the law or the curse of lack. <laughs> Having become a curse for us, for it is written, curses everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. In other words, Abraham was a wealthy man. He had visitations. He didn't lack anything. He was not under the curse. The Lord removed the curse. He removed it for me and you so that not only was Abraham a blessed man, see, because you're either blessed or you're what? Cursed. There's one or the other. There's no in between. So we're either blessed or cursed. But according to the law and the Mosaic law, all right, because you and I can't fulfill, fulfill the Mosaic law. So Jesus paid the price to release that curse for me and you, that we could receive the blessings of Abraham. Now, these blessings of Abraham are available for me and you to prosper in everything. To what? Prosper. Because of the price Christ paid. So it's the price that Christ paid now has released everything that Abraham was promised from God to me and you. But if you don't know it, you don't get it. If you don't know the promises of God, you don't get them. How about healing? Prosperity, abundance, overflow. If you don't know, and if you're not confessing it and making proclamation on it, how do you expect it to come? Because things will not come. And I'm not talking about just confession, confession, confession. I'm talking about you know, you know, you know. It's not a, a mind thing. It must be burned. There must be a new created memory. <laughs> Let's go to Psalm 23. Psalm 23. This is how we are going to finance the kingdom. Psalm 23. Is everybody there? In verse 1 it says, The Lord is my what? Shepherd. I shall not want. That word want also means lack. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. Still waters is a place where you drink. Amen. It's a place of abundance. He restores my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions according to his character, not mine. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, or I walk through the valley of impossibilities. Impossibilities. It just, this is impossible. There's no way. There's no way I can get out of this. I just can't see it. Well, you better start seeing it. Because if you can't see it, you don't get out of it. Now, I walk through the shell, the valley of the shadow of death. These are impossibilities. I will what? Fear no evil. In other words, I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid or nor carry the fear. I won't be afraid to succeed. You know, people are afraid to succeed sometimes. Because there's so much garbage going around. Well, you know what? You didn't win the lottery because if God allowed you to win the lottery, you'd mess up. Hello. Listen, Abraham did not take a vow of poverty. Anybody who does is an idiot. How are people going to pay for Bibles? How are they going to even get there and go pick them up? 
well, God must be holding back something because of something. No, he's holding back something because you're under the curse of lack and you're not citing the area of the receiving of the blessing of Abraham. It doesn't mean that we won't go through things. Even Abraham went through things and he had to give up some things, but he was still was able to fulfill and prosper. Job was the same way. Job lost it all. But did he prosper again? Yes. Yes. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In other words, they guide me. You prepare a table in, before me in the presence of my enemies. woo It's called a table of prosperity. <laughs> You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, forever. See, in this, a new created memory has been established because of the experience that has set an individual free. You know, one of my really first, well, I had many experiences, but one, one really blew me away one time when the Lord told me to go give money somewhere. And uh, I wasn't 100% sure I heard him right, but I was obedient and I went. And the person didn't show up and then showed up late. I thought I got out of it and then wrote the check. And it was a $1,000 check and it wiped me out, basically. And it was on a Friday and on that Monday, somebody came to my house, knocked on my door and gave me a $4,500 $4, check. And the Lord said, if you'll be obedient to me to sow where you're supposed to sow, See, because you can sow anywhere and not receive. But when you're obedient to God to sow, there's a specific purpose of that. Because everybody got it. Then you will reap a harvest. And that blew me away to where I said, okay, where else am I going to give money away? Man, I was ready to write checks. I didn't care. Ooh, we're going to have some good time now. And, and, and this is how we began to prosper in the area of getting homes, feeding people, clothing, sheltering. Sending Bibles. And, of course, difficult times come. But it doesn't mean that we're not prospering. See, even when finances seem to settle down and slow down a little bit, that doesn't mean that you're not prospering. Does everybody got it? Because I would rather prosper in the Spirit than anything else. And if you're prospering in the Spirit, there's no way that you're going to be poor. Because God is going to make way somehow, even if he has to open up a bank and put your name on it. <laughs> Go to Malachi 3. So do not be swayed by the world's standards, by the news media. We are not of Satan's world system. We are not walking in the soulish arena. We're to be walking in the spirit of truth, the spirit of grace, the law of the spirit. Oh, glory. Malachi chapter 3. In verse 8, and we've heard some of this before. It says, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but you say, In what way have you robbed me? In tithes and offerings, you are cursed with a what? A curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And what does he say? Try me. In other words, let me give you an experience. So a new created memory can get burned about tithing and offering. Says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out your pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. It's amazing how many people think that tithing and offering was a part of the law. It's not a part of the law. Tithing and offering established with Melchizedek and Abraham. So. When people say, well, I, I'm not under the law. I'm not under the law anymore. I don't need to tithe. Oh, yes, you do. You need to tithe and you need the offering because it's not a part of the law. It's a part of a command from God that was established with Melchizedek and Abraham. And people wonder why things are happening because they're robbing God and don't even know it. But see, that's how the devil operates, doesn't he? Has everybody got it? That's how the devil operates. He wants you to rob God so you can bring a curse. Now, if God asks you to do something and you don't, would you rob him? Hello? Does it bring a curse? Yes. That's how he infiltrates. That's how he accesses. When you've been told by authorities not to do something and you do it, what does it do? 
It brings a curse. Does everybody get it? That's why God places us in fellowships for direction, for counsel, so that we can learn, so that we can grow, so we can be mature, and so that he can trust us. Hello? Tithes and offerings are not of the Mosaic law. Again, it was with the blessing of Abraham. He said, try me. Let me experience. Come on, get this experience, and let's get it burned in you, a new created memory. Amen? In 2 Peter chapter 3. Everybody say, I'm under the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because of the price Jesus paid for me on the cross. 2 Peter chapter 3. Again, if you don't know the promise, will you get it? No. In verse 17. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 17. Let's read it. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand... Beware lest you also fall from your own what? Steadfastness. Being led away with the error of the wicked. But grow in the what? Grace. This is called the law of grace. And the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to whom be glory both now and forever. In other words, resist the curse of lack. Resist the devil. And increase in the law of grace with the blessing of Abraham for health, for wealth, and for relationship in the spirit with God, in the things of spirit, revelation. So if you'll resist, in other words, he says, steadfast, stand, do not be moved. Do not be moved. So when the enemy tries to bring you to a place to bring a curse on you, you must resist. Submit to God and what? Resist the devil. Why? Because if you can't submit to God, you will have a curse on you. Now, I'm not telling you that a curse is going to send you to hell. Do you understand that? But I'm going to tell you, you're going to have a hard time in this realm. The devil will constantly steal everything that you put your hands to. It will only last for a period of time. And he'll steal it. He'll have access to all of these things. You'll work your butt off and get nowhere. You'll wonder, what happened? What have I been doing for these last years? And nothing to show for it. Now, I'm not talking about materialism. I'm talking about maturity. Hello? I'm talking about growing in the Lord. I'm talking about an area where you're no longer fighting for your life. You surrendered it. I'm talking about where it's first-time obedience. There's a difference. There's an honor and respect. See, in this realm, there's an honor and respect. It's a totally different realm in the spirit. See, the soulish arena does, it tramples people. Steps on them, does whatever. In, the, in this realm, there's an honor and respect for one another. See, people lose the sight of understanding what love truly is. Love is not a feeling. It's a choice. Love is an, God says I, he so loved the world that he gave his son. See, it's about giving of yourself. It's not about taking. There's so many takers in the body of Christ and not enough givers. And I'm talking about giving of self. Giving of self. Giving. Amen. The Bible tells us that we're not to worry what we're to wear, what we're to eat, what we're to dress, and so forth. The Lord knows what we need, isn't he? And he will provide. And he'll provide abundantly. Believe me, we get clothes in the ministry, we can start a thrift store and probably make a million bucks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Project number 442. <laughs> We want to be led. No assuming. <laughs> Go to John chapter 1. Actually, I had somebody call me the other day, last week, and uh, said, listen, I think you should start a thrift store, and I'll operate it for you, and this, that, and whatever. I said, yeah, come in a week or two. <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't time for me to hear it yet. When I get revelation in my prayer, then I'll, Look, other than that, I'm not going there. In John chapter 1 and verse 14, and the word or the law became what? Flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of what? Grace and truth. In other words, full of the law of grace and the law of truth. Does everybody see that? He was full of the law of grace and the law of truth. He carried, he was the fullness of truth, grace, and, of course, the spirit. 
Does everybody see this? Praise God. Let's go a little further. It says, John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father. He has declared him. Jesus came in the law of truth and the law of grace. With the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to remove the curse of lack and fulfill the Mosaic law for all mankind according to their obedience. According to what? Their obedience. Go to Proverbs 10. Proverbs 10 and verse 22. Would you read it? The blessing of the Lord makes one rich or makes one prosper, right? And he adds no what? Sorrow with it. So if you're blessed and you're prospering and you got sorrow, that ain't God. There's a lot of wealthy individuals, and the only thing they are, they're afraid of is losing what they have. See, when, when the Lord blesses you, you're not afraid to lose nothing. You're not in self-surviving mode. Your focus is not you, it's others. There's a difference. It's not you, it's others. So you're not afraid to lose anything because you know that whatever you have to give up, God will return twice. So sometimes the Lord is asking us to give something up so he can get us double the amount. But see, people become emotionally attached to things and can't give it up. Or they come in fear because they can't trust God. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich spiritually, physically, and financially. Now, I want you to understand something that it doesn't happen overnight all the time. There's a process that you grow in it because it must come no longer from thought. It must be life. No longer thought, but life. Again, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it. Satan is the God of the world system. But Jesus, God of creation. Now, Satan doesn't want believers to prosper. Prosperity is not an option for a believer. Come on. Prosperity is not an option for a believer. It's an inheritance. It's not an option. It's an inheritance. So it's a promise through the blessing of Abraham, isn't it? But all of these years, because many people don't know the truth, they're out there quoting scripture. Well, Lord, you give me power to have wealth. You're doing, But they don't realize that it's already an inherited promise. It's already an inherited promise for you to prosper. See, right now you're prospering. You're prospering right now by getting revelation about Abraham's blessing that's upon you through the price Christ made. Hello? Again, prosperity is not an option. It is an inheritance, just like healing. It's an inheritance. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all is within me. Bless his holy name and forgotten, forget not his benefits. Who what? Forgives my iniquity and heals my disease. Who rescues me from destruction. Who puts a new song in my mouth. All of these are inheritance to believers through the blood of Christ and the price of Jesus made. It's not by works. It's by obedience to what he says. It is the will of God. So is it the will of God for you to be healed? Is it the will of God for you to prosper? Hello? You know, so many people are going, well, I don't, if it's his will, <laughs> what's the matter for you? It is his will. It's his will for you to get healed. It's his will for you to prosper. But it's his will for you to obey. Because obedience in this area is going to keep you in line so the devil can't steal and the blessings can come. And when the manifestation or the experience happens, it's going to burn something in you called a new created memory. And you're going to go to that memory and go, yeah. Oh, get out of here, devil. You liar. You've deceived me long enough. I'm not under the curse of lack spiritually, physically, or financially. I'm under the blessing of Abraham. Or I shall prosper. 
The Bible says God has given us the power to prosper. He says he enjoys, he delights his children in prospering. Listen, Jesus wasn't poor. In fact, when he was birthed, three dudes showed up. Actually, probably more than that, but not on his birth two years later. And they showed up with gold. Hello? And then he was always financed. People showed up. God always provided through his whole ministry. He didn't walk around with rags. Hello? The word where it says he became poor for me, he, was, he became humble. Now, he could have built mansions and everything, but he didn't. He hung out and he slept with all of us because he became man. He wanted to experience what man went through. He wanted to know exactly. So he became poor. He became humble so you and I could become rich. But it's not just rich financially. Never discern someone by how much wealth they have. Because one of the things that individuals always, that when somebody is wealthy according to self-wealth, they're always trying to protect it because they're building their own empire. But when the wealth is from the Lord, it's his. You don't have to worry about losing it. Hello? Now, you must be a good steward. You must be a faithful steward to maintain the things that God has given us. And in this, you've got to have wisdom, don't you? Go to Ephesians 3, a couple scriptures, and we'll prosper. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3, and in verse 20, Now to him it was able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or what? Think. So it's beyond what we can ask or think now. Why? Because we've experienced and it's been a new created memory. According to the power that works in us, called the anointing, to him be the glory in, in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. No longer just thinking it, but experiencing it. You know, even the word says give and it will be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, right? The Bible talks about sowing and reaping. What you sow is what you reap. All of these here are associated with laws, aren't they? Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. So forth. Go to First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. You know, the word tells us don't use this freedom of liberty in the wrong way. Yes, again, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. But in this freedom, it's a freedom from bondage. It's so that we are to obey the law of the spirit, the law of grace, and the law of truth. So it doesn't bring us under the curse, but remove us. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17, it says, Command those who are rich in this present age not to be what? Haughty or prideful, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to what? Enjoy. Let them do good that they may be rich in good works. Rich in what? Good works. Ready to what? Give. Give. Willing to what? Share. Storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Command those who are rich not to become haughty. Haughty. In Second Corinthians chapter 9. Well, you know, I just don't like my job anymore. I think I'll just quit. See, but they just, they're only thinking of themselves. They're not thinking about the effect of others. Has everybody got it? They're not thinking of the effect of others. How about family members? How about having money to be able to feed someone? See, when it's all about self, there's a curse there. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6. But this I say, he who sows what? Sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a what? Cheerful giver. Hello. Nothing worse than a miserable giver. No matter how much you give, you won't reap a harvest out of it. So you got to be a cheerful giver. You know, when the Lord asked me to write that check, and, of course, I, I didn't know if I heard him correctly. And then when I... Um, I was supposed to meet this man at this place. Well, this is where the Lord told me he was going to be. He was going to be at this luncheon. And he, wa he didn't show up, and I was, became cheerful. I said, whoa, man, I, thought, I guess I missed it. You know? Okay. And then he showed up, and I was quickened to that. And when I saw the man, I ran over to him because I had to look beyond. I had to look beyond what I could do with it. 
I had to look to what God was going to do with it. Does everybody understand that? And, of course, by seeing what God was going to do with it, it came back to me uh, quite a bit more. Is everybody okay? (laughs) Sowing and reaping. In verse 8, God is able to what? Make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for what? Every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. While you are enriched in everything for all liberality, liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. Yes, yes. For the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the what? Saints, but also is abounding through many thanksgivings to serve to God. While through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God for the abundance of your confession to the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing with them all and all men. And by their prayer for you, who long for you because of the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift, sowing and reaping. And I want to close with Deuteronomy 28, creating new memories, creating new memories. You know, so many times people run from the experience. That's why they never get the experience. <laughs> Are you listening? They begin to run and don't give God the opportunity to bring the experience. So they're always running on empty. They're running on false hope. And they're running in their own strength. And they can never grow. In other words, they may know the truth, but they're not increasing. And they become bound. Because the experience is going to burn a new created memory of freedom. In Deuteronomy, always growing, growing in the knowledge, but never coming to the what? truth or grown in the knowledge of truth deuteronomy 28 verse 1 now it shall what come to pass if you what diligently obey the voice of the lord your god to observe what to observe what carefully all of his commandments which i command you today that the lord your god will set you high above all the nations of the earth and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you how many of y'all want blessings to come upon you and overtake you Because you what? Obey the voice of the Lord your God. Not the voice of memory, not the voice of feeling, but the voice of the Lord. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the what? Country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Is that healing? Yeah. The the produce of your ground and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. I don't have any cattle, but praise God, I'll take the blessing anyways. Blessed shall be your basket. We got a basket. And your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your what? Enemies who rise against you to be what? Defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and shall flee seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. He will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. Why? Because they're not of him. You know, people are afraid of you, and they don't even know why. They don't even know. They can't understand that they can't handle you. I'm not talking in a granola way, because there's some granolas out there that can't be handled. They need to be delivered. But I'm talking about the area of a person that is meek, and just the presence themselves causes a stirring without saying anything. Without saying anything. Why? Because the light and truth that's in you is radiating through. And the demons see it in the other people, and they don't like it. See, one thing is the the enemy 
really does fear us. He fears us. So the only thing he can do is shoot up all kinds of fiery darts and all kinds of things and try to deceive us and lie to us so that we begin to exchange the things of truth for lies. Tries to bring us back into a world where we have a comfortable feeling instead of standing on that new created memory. He is a liar and a thief. And he comes to steal, kill, and destroy and bring division and strife. Causes separation. Causes harm. Causes discouragement. Causes lack. But we are blessed with the blessing of Abraham. No longer under the law or the curse of lack. But free. 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 Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Hold fast. Stand fast. Reject the things of the spirit. Uh, the demons and the spirits that try to come to you and reattach you to deception. Stand firm on what God has said, his word. The word says increase in grace. Increase in grace. And you're, so you're going to increase. You must increase. The more you increase, the more you build up faith. The more experiences that will happen in your life and the more created memories will be burned in you. And the stronger you will become in the power of Christ Jesus. So we don't run to comfort. We run to truth and allow God to create an experience for us so he can create a new memory in us. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for creating new memories. We thank you that we are not under the curse of the law, but we are under the blessings of Abraham. And it is your desire that we are, that we prosper, that we prosper spiritually, physically, and financially. We thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, but every tongue that rises up against us will be condemned. We thank you, Father, that you are faithful to complete what you started. And I'm asking tonight, Lord, that there be an impartation, a powerful impartation to your people of revelation, that they may know who they are who they are, what they are, and their inheritance that you've paid a tremendous price for in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed.